All right, some other additional terms to remember. Government choices refers to the price controls, direct and indirect taxes and subsidies. So price controls, which is a minimum or a maximum price, we will be learning about in, separate, in a separate topic. And direct and indirect taxes and subsidies. So these are the these are the aspects that you'll have to use on the graph and make a change and then talk about how that's impacted equilibrium. Okay, so these are the changes you'll be making on a graph. Society refers to the following sectors, either consumers, producers, and the government. So that's who we talk about when we're talking about a society. Market equilibrium refers to the price and the quantity determined by the interaction of supply and demand. This includes identifying market reaction to excess demand or excess supply. Once we make a change in our graph with our two curves, our supply and our demand curve, we'll be able to see where there is a shortage or a surplus. So we will be identifying that shortage or a surplus and then discussing how we get back to the equilibrium where they meet again in the middle. So this whole topic is either about government choices or looking at a surplus or a shortage and understanding how we reach that, mar that market equilibrium again. This is an elaboration on demonstrating understanding. So this would be your achieved level. Okay, so you can read this in more detail yourself. This would be a merit level, so deep, deep level, deep level learning, surface level learning, and then once we transfer our learning, we call that relational, and that is a comprehensive understanding. So this usually refers to your excellence level answers, your merit, and your achievement level answers. Um, what does it mean to be relative, like relative in that last one? Oh, right. So when it's a comprehensive understanding, you're going that next step further in your explanations. So you're talking about the impact, explaining why, using the words such as because or the impact this has, and then making sure you're using all your graph coordinates from up in these questions and your definitions. So, so I, some ideas about how you can take notes that might work for you. Mind maps, brace maps if you're visual. If you like writing and you think quite linear, you can do it in lists. You can do your handwriting, pen and paper, or if you prefer to type, that's fine as well. And then make sure you put it into sections, headings, and paragraphs. That's, again, a logical, linear way to structure all your notes so that when you come back to revision at the end of the year, it's all nicely organised. That will make it a whole lot easier. Let's recap. So we're just going to recap our first topic, which was demand. Look at demand schedules, the demand, law of demand and our graphs. Then we're going to look at supply, supply schedules, the law of supply, and supply graphs and then we bring them together to incorporate a market because a market we in the market we always have a buyer and we always have a seller and in this case our buyer is a consumer and demand and we have a producer who's going to sell the product which is our supply so this is an example of a demand schedule you might remember remember this from term one. So let's say that there are five people in a small town. Each person's demand for hot chocolate is below. So market demand in this town is the total each person is willing and able to buy at each price. So in our first topic we looked at demand schedules as an individual. Now we bring everyone together and look at the whole market's demand. So at $2, Molly is willing and able to buy 14 hot chocolates. Mandy is willing and able to buy 7. Rangi is willing and able to buy 4. 
Caleb 10, Ricky 3. So our market demand, our market includes everybody at a $2 price. We add them all up to get 38. At $2.50, Molly is willing and able to buy 12 hot chocolates. So we can see when the price increases, her demand decreases. Okay? And that happens for everybody because the law of demand, when the price goes up, the demand's going to go down. So as we can see, as the price goes up, everybody's demand changes, which impacts our overall demand as well. Okay, so this we call our market demand. From our demand schedules, that is how we figure out our demand curve that we plot into a graph. So remember that we always need to include a title, our axes, our lines, and our labels. Price is always on the y-axis. Quantity is always on the x-axis. This is a example that you can practice in your own time. <laughs> um, but here are the answers if you wish to check. <laughs> so the, this demand curve was plotted based on the previous demand schedule. And this is how it would look if you were asked to put a demand, market demand schedule into a market demand curve. Yeah. So this um, curve is based off like the totals, not each of us. Correct. So as we can see here at a dollar, it was just above 6 and 6.5. So if we go back to our... So if we go back to our demand schedule, we can see at a dollar... These were all the different demands, and then we add them all together, it was 6,300, so our market demand. So this column here of market demand, these are the numbers that have now been used over here to create our demand curve. So take note that this quantity is in the thousands, all right? So 6,000 and it was 300, so that's why it is just in between the 6 and the 6.5. So all of these points are the market demand totals. And then you plot the points, connect them all up, label it D. Be careful not to go past the point, because remember that is incorrect. That's called extrapolating your data. And what it would show us is, for example, you plotted all the points, drew your line, and then we're just a little bit careless and go a little bit past that point. What that's actually showing us, though, is that our data is now here. Okay? So our data now would be here, not stopping here. So it's just an inaccuracy. So that's why it's really important just to be careful when you're connecting your dots. You don't want to go over the line.